Okay, um, so this is uh, call three, summer 2012, question one. I'm doing my special YouTube smile. Right, stop it then. Um, two methods for this, and I'll show you both methods really quickly. So, so method one, and this is the way that, that people most commonly did this. If we want to, to solve a, uh, a modulus equation, then a way of kind of getting around the difficulty of working with the modulus sign is to square both sides, because it, it's the other thing that makes everything positive. So if we square both sides, we get 2x minus 5 squared is greater than x plus 1 squared. And then we will multiply out both sides of this to get, well, this at this stage should be really easy to do, shouldn't it? Um, with minus 20x and a plus 25, and here we have x squared is 2x plus 1. And then we need to combine it into one quadratic. So we've got. <laughs> Why is Mark so smiling? Um, we've got. Now, this is. this Quite a few people made this mistake here. Minus 20, take away 2, will be minus 22x. And uh, it's slightly alarming how, how many people ended up with minus 18 in there. Um, yes, just. Right, um, we then want to see if we can factorise this. Uh, it, it's going to have to be 3x and an x. There are all sorts of ways of factorising it. You know, you could do that thing where you multiply first and last things together and then try and find factors that make up minus 22. Um, but, but hang on, 24, well, that's, that, that's uh, 6 times 4, isn't it? And if we have the 6 there, that would give us an 18. And another 4 that gives us 22, so let's put the 6 there and the 4 there. I make them both negative, and we get... Now, I always tell the lower 6th when I'm doing this, um, that when we've got the inequality and we've factorised it, we call these critical values at this stage. We've got 4 thirds, and we've got 6 as our critical values, and we've got to turn that into the inequality. So we do a very quick sketch of what we're looking at. We've got a curve that crosses at 4 thirds and 6. And we want to know when it is bigger than 0. So it's bigger than 0 over here. So both the x-axis at this side and at this side over here. So the region that we're interested in is represented by the yellow bit there. And so we need to separate it. It's two separate regions. So it has to be two separate statements at the end. So we've got x less than 4 thirds, and x greater than 6, and that's it. Notice that somehow wrapping that together is no good, because that, that, wouldn't, that doesn't acknowledge it as being two separate states. But yes, you did do that one day. Method B. <laughs> which a few people did, would be the method where you do a little sketch of the graphs. We've got, um, what two graphs have we got? 2x minus 5. Now, 2x minus 5, that's going to be quite steep, and it's going to cross at minus 5, and it's going to be a graph that looks something like that. And the other graph is x plus 1. Now, that point there is at 5. x plus 1 is going to come in and do that. And, and I think we've got the two graphs drawn there, just about. My gradients aren't quite right, but you, you get the idea. Um, that's at plus 5, that's at plus 1. There they are. Now, this is the uh, modulus of x plus 1, and this one is the modulus of 2x minus 5. And the two points of intersection are where the positive bit of x plus 1 crosses the positive and the negative bits of 2x minus 5. So the two points are going to come from x plus 1 equals 2x minus 5, and that's going to give us, well, that's going to give us an x over there and a 6 over there, so x equals 6, so that, that point where the two positive branches, that point is at 6. If we do a positive and a negative branch, so x plus 1 is equal to minus 2x plus 5, because if we do the, the negative of all that, it would be minus 2x plus 5, that's going to give us 3x equals 4, so x is 4 thirds. So that point there is at 4 thirds. 
Now we've got to decide which way round our inequality wants to be. We're looking for when the steeper one is above the less steep one. And it's above it to the right of that point there, so for x bigger than 6, and it's above it to the left of that point there, it's always above it as you go off in that direction. So we conclude x less than 4 thirds, <coughs> x greater than 6. And either method is just as good as the other. I suppose there's more space for making mistakes in the quadratic one as some of you did, but um, anyway, I think, I think maybe one person did it that way. Thanks, Jack. Anyway, that's uh, that's that first question. <laughs>